Good day everybody. It gives me great pleasure to, to see you in this video of today. And thank you for subscribing, for viewing. Thank you for dropping your comment and thank you for sharing. In this video, I'll be talking about another component of research methodology. Today, in this video, I'll be talking about study area, research setting. So some call it study area, some use research setting. Um, it simply means the location, the locality, the environment where the research uh, will be conducted or where the research was conducted. It simply, it simply research area or a study area or research setting simply wants to give us an idea of what the environment, the location, the locality of the research looks like. So we can understand why the research was conducted in that place or why the research will be conducted in that place. Why that place is suitable or is the most suitable place to conduct the research. I've read so many theses, so many dissertations, so many projects, so many reports, and people just address this issue and approach the issue of research, I mean, study area or research setting uh, as though it's just a tangent. It's a very important component of the methodology. In fact, research is one, like I always say, it's a fractal, it's a process. Every component of your research report must communicate. There must be handshake among different components. And all the components of the research must be justified, must be meaningful. None is to be treated as though we do not understand what we want to do or as though it's not important. Every component of the research is important. The same goes for every component of the methodology. So research, um, area or research setting or study area is important and i've seen so many works um, so many projects or dissertation or thesis or reports having study area or research setting and all you find is just the geographical description of the place so if you are from geography that's fine but if you need more information if you are from geography and even if you are not from geography if you are from sociology social sciences or you are just a research organization or a marketing research institute organization or just an institution doing social research you need more than geography most of the time you just see people talk about latitude this longitude this climatic situation of the place the vegetation of the place or or the boundaries of the place well these are important but we need more than this People just, even some will just go uh, as long as just telling us all these geograph geographical features. Uh, they are important. I'm not saying they are not important, but they are not the, they are, they are not the only elements you, 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 you need in that particular um, section of your study area. You need the geographical features, fine. But you, more importantly, or additionally, you need to let us know the fundamental reason you conducted the research in that place or you will conduct the research in that place and it cannot be on convenience i also know that some people especially students uh, who just do their research on convenience they want to do the research anywhere so far it's closer to them or it's more accessible to them or it's cheaper no it can't just be if you're talking in terms of science it can't just be because it's convenience convenience choice is not the best choice when you are it's not the best reason for you to do a research in, in, in a place. Con in fact, convenience is not generally acceptable. Except if you just want to pilot, it's not important. But if it's a serious research, there must be a scientific reason why you, are, you have chosen or you are choosing that location. For example, I always tell people that you must problematize the setting. You must problematize the study area. You must prob problematize the research setting in the sense that you must let us see what's the problem in that place, vividly speaking. What's the problem in that place that is making you choose that place? What's the history of that place? What's the culture? You can even do the ethnography of that place in a way that it shows us that this problem actually exists here. So this is where we need to do this research. 
So parameterizing the setting is very important. It's not you can give us the geography, but what is it about the culture of the place that is throwing up the problem? Does the reason to choose that place? What is the attitude of the people? What's in the uh, geography of the place? What's in the what's in the behavior of the people? What's in the character? What's in the history of the people that that want us to go and do the research or that made us to go and do the research there? To the extent that your study area or research setting will have what we call the wow effect. The wow effect means somebody is reading your work and they say, wow, fantastic. Of the truth, based on this description of this environment, this research is best located in this place. So you don't just choose your research area or your, or your research setting or study area. There must be reasons, and all this must be clearly explained in your work. Well, you can give us the geographical description, latitude, this, longitude, this, the climatic variation, the, the, the border lines, and the features, geographical features, so that we can know where it is located. But now, depending on the, the research you want to do, you must, there must be elements in that place that you can problematize, that you can explain to show us that this is the place this research is best suited. For example, if you are doing a research on conflicts, definitely it's better for you to go and do the research in a conflict zone. Although you can do a comparative study of a conflict zone and a peaceful zone, so you can understand what are the elements in these zones that can help us to understand the reason for conflicts and the pathways to, to peace. So you can compare and contrast. But the point I'm trying to make is that there must be a reason that you would just that would justify. In this in the example I just gave in terms of conflict, you must okay, you want to use a conflict zone as well as a setting because you want to start understand what are the drivers, what are the causes of conflict and the manifestations of conflict. Then you may now also juxtapose that by choosing another peaceful zone that, that may be identical to understand why are they having peace there rather than conflict as it is in other side. So we can now understand the peace scenario and conflict scenario and bring the conflict scenario to peace and bring peace to conflict scenario. But the point I'm trying to mention is the fact that there must be proper documentation and explanation of the inherent parameters of that society where you want to study, where you want to do your study in a way that we are able to understand. So it's not just about the geography, it's not just about the description, it's about explaining the logic of the choice of that study area. I hope I've added value to you today until you become an expert in research. I will continue to do what I'm doing. Thank you very much. Subscribe, like, share, and comment. Until I see you in the next video, which will most likely be on study population. Continue to enjoy yourself.